Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video and in this video we're going to be trying to fix this Mega Drive game here. Bonkers. So I got this from Mike from 1UP Gaming and he sent me a box full of uh, stuff which is faulty and on this one it says here this won't boot, have tried reflowing, no luck. Now I've just popped it in here quickly and it definitely isn't working. So at the moment you can see up there that uh, the Mega Drive is working got golden axe in it at the moment, golden axe 2, there you go. Right, so let's do this one, turn it off, take it out. Now if you look closely you can see in here that it all looks nice and clean, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. That's just a bit of dust there. I don't think it's going to be an issue with dirty contacts. And obviously if Mike's done a bit of reflowing he probably made sure that this was all okay here as well. So let's pop that one in and uh, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to turn it on now and you can see what it does, which is absolutely nothing. But it does sort of recognise that there's some sort of signal there because that timer thing goes off the TV, but there's nothing happening. I'm going to turn it off and on again. Yeah, so there's nothing happening. Right, let's give it a little wiggle. Let's put it in and then just lift it out ever so slightly. There we go. Now turn it on. And again, there's nothing happening. So let's take this apart and see if there's anything obvious to me. Now I know Mike's looked at it, so there's, I don't think there's gonna be anything obvious, like uh, one of the components hanging off, but you never know, I might be able to see something that he might have missed, or it could be the main uh, chip in there. What's it called, is it EP-ROM or EEPROM? EEPROM or something. Basically, Gadget UK helped me out because I've already done two of these. I did Sensible Soccer, that managed to get working myself, and Paperboy, and I had a complete nightmare with Paperboy trying absolutely everything. And it turned out that the main chip was faulty. So Gadget UK 164, uh, that's Chris, he basically uh, programmed up a chip for me, sent it over in the post, popped it in there, and I had a little bit of trouble because I'd ruined the, I'd ruined quite a lot of the board, but eventually I did get it working. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see what's uh, what's up with this one. So Chris is probably watching this now thinking, oh no, please, please let it not be the chip, otherwise he'll, uh, I'll be on the email to him <laughs> to get one sent over. Right, uh, I'm hoping it might be some trace or something on the inside, so let's take it apart and see what's happening. Okay, now to undo these ones here, you need something called, uh, from memory, a game bit. So let's see if it's that one there. So originally I didn't have one of these. Uh, some people said you could use a BIC, you know, the plastic thing off a BIC, or uh, I think I used a long nose pliers to get into it before. But after that, I uh, went out and I bought myself one. Now I have to use a bigger socket set for this one minute. Right, here we go, let's have a look inside. Right, that all looks lovely and clean. Let me zoom in, I can't see any signs of anything broken on that side. Like, with the sensible socket, it had a load of, it had like a, a big ridge across here where the plastic had been rubbing across it and it broke through some of the tracks. But with that, that all looks good. I can see it's been cleaned as well. Uh, Right, okay, first impressions are that that all looks, that all looks fine. Let's have a look this side. So we have a capacitor, a resistor, even though it's labelled up as C2, and the, uh, the main chip here, which again all looks lovely. Right, okay, initial, initial impressions are that it's going to be a faulty chip, because there's really not much to this. If, uh, if the contacts are clean, and there's continuity between, for example, here and each of the pins of the chip and each of the pins of the chip here, then uh, there's not really else it can be unless it can be the capacitor or this resistor here, which I will obviously check, but I'm thinking that it might well be, I'm thinking it's going to be a problem with the chip. Weird thing is, I think it's quite rare to have the chips go, but because I buy off eBay, obviously the easy fixes like cleaning the contacts here have already been done. Anyway, let's... Uh, Let's check this capacitor and uh, capacitor and this resistor here. Right, first things first, let's see if we can get any reading out of this little resistor. Thank you. 
Bearing in mind I don't really know what I'm talking about. Uh, 7.4 mega ohms, does that seem a little bit... I thought that would be like ohms or in kilo ohms. And why is it reading different, different ways? This of course is not a resistor. I mean it is labelled up as a C2 but it looks like a resistor, doesn't it? Okay, that's going to be something I'm going to have to uh, look into. The capacitor doesn't look like it's bulging at all. Let me get an ESR out of it. Right, 16 volt, 47 UF. So 16 volt, 47 UF, it should be less than 1.6. Let's see what it is actually testing. Yeah, so I said it should be less than 1.6, and it is. It's only 0.64, and it says uh, for a 25 volt cap, good if less than 200 microfarad. So I'm pretty sure that that capacitor is going to be testing okay. So what I'm going to do is, before I go any further, I'm just going to get my multimeter. I'm just going to check for continuity between here and all the pins here. So I will unsolder the capacitor just to check it to see what, see if it is actually testing the 47 microfarad. This one here is confusing me at the moment. I might try to get a reading off that online to see what that uh, to see what that actually is using the color code there because at least I can actually make out what that is. It looks quite clear. It hasn't worn off at all. But before I do any of that, let me just make sure that it's not, for example, a problem with the circuit board itself. Right, so I'm just putting my meter to continuity. And for example, I'm just going to be going across the, uh, the pins here. So for example, they go via wires there up to this one here. So uh, if I was to hold this one here, I should just put it in the wire because I know it's okay to the wire. And then I can test to the pin there. So I know now that that's getting there. It's going to take a while, I'm just going to go across them all, yep. Continuity wise, it's all tests and okay. So I'm going to unsolder this and this and see if I can see anything wrong with it. Could be complete coincidence, but I thought I'd seen a bit of a cracked solder joint there when I was unsoldering this one. I thought this one looked slightly cracked. So I'm just going to just quickly test this, pop it back in, and then uh, I might actually see if it's working right now, just in case it was a, a bad joint there. Yeah, 47 microfarad, there's definitely nothing wrong with that capacitor. Right, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to do it off camera. I'm just going to pop this back in and uh, just redo that joint and then just test it, just in case, because it just, it didn't look quite right. Right, unfortunately it didn't make any difference whatsoever, testing exactly the same as before. I just wanted to do it just, just because I did think that looked a bit iffy, but that could have been me wobbling it around the place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out this resistor here, uh, just to see if it's measuring anything different out of circuit, and I'm also going to read the colour code on the bands as well. Right, that's weird. Why is this not giving me any reading? Look. not coming up with anything. Try it the other way. Shouldn't matter any resistor anyway. That's strange. Definitely making a contact on it. Hmm. So could this uh, resistor be out of range of my meter? Or is it faulty? Thing is, I was getting a reading on here. Let me go back onto here and see if the reading was from uh, from the board, maybe. Yeah, there you go. That's the reading from the board, isn't it? I wonder, is that definitely a, uh, definitely a resistor? I mean, it looks like one. But it is labelled up as C2, as if it's capacitor. Let me go to... Let me go to this, see if it comes up with anything this way around just in case it is some weird kind of... Uh... Oh look, it is giving me a reading. Yeah, 18 nanofarad. Hmm, okay. Well that's new to me, even though I'm not going to be able to get this to work. 
Right, so that resistor looks just like a cap uh, that capacitor looks just like a resistor, but possibly it is a capacitor then. Very strange. Well, I'm gonna uh, I might have a look in Golden Axe and see see if that's the same or not. Well, I've been reading up about this little fella here, and yes, it is a capacitor. If I seen that, I would have thought that that would have to be a resistor. But it's not, and that's the reason it was giving me a weird reading when I was uh, going across it. But anyway, when I put it into this one here, if you have a look, it does come up with capacitor. It says 18.59 uh, nanofarad, I think it is, and here it says 18.25. That's the reading I got here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm sure this is absolutely fine, but I am going to just unsolder the one from the Golden Axe game, and I'm going to measure that just to see what it's like, and if it's a similar amount, I'm going to pop it in this board just to see how it performs. I'm 100% certain that the capacitor is correct. Right now, I am 99.9% .9 certain that this chip here has gone faulty. I just want to do that last 0.1% just to make sure it's not to do with uh, this little capacitor here. So this is 30 nanofarad. I'm uh, I'm going to put it in there just to see. I'm certain that it is the big chip, but uh, I know the values are different. The other one's 18. This is 30. I'm not sure whether that's actually enough in the real world to make any difference or not. Right, I've just popped it in that way. I put it in the uh, same way that it came out of the other board. I haven't put it through the holes here. It should go this side but uh, it would be a bit of a tight fit. So I'm just doing it there, it would do exactly the same thing. Well, I'm just gonna pop this in now, see if it makes any difference. Right, okay, unfortunately it made no difference at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the original capacitor back in, because I don't believe this is faulty, and I'm gonna put this one back in my Golden Axe game, make sure that's still working. And just because I've got the soldering iron out, I am just gonna quickly reflow every one of these. I know Mike said he's already done it. Uh, it all looks fine, I can't see any broken joints, but I might as well quickly do it, and then I know 100% without any doubt that the chip is faulty. Right, I'm just going to clean them both up now with some uh, IPA. Okay, so that is it all cleaned up now. You can see it all looks absolutely, uh, absolutely immaculate. There's nothing wrong with those contacts there. There you go, look at them. Testing okay, testing okay, done all the continuity giving it a nice good clean and reflowed everything on it. So I'm going to pop it back in and then uh, pop it back in and just give it one more try. Right, let's bring it over and I can show you the disappointment. All right, first of all, I'm just going to make sure my Golden Axe 2 game is still working. Yeah, there we go. I can see that's, uh, that's booting up there. Right, okay, let's try this bonkers. Come on now, come on. What's the odds of this working? I would bet my house on it that this is not gonna work. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, there you go. I kinda knew from the beginning it was gonna be the chip, but at the same time, you have to go through this kind of process just to make sure, really just for, for your own mind to make sure, because. Otherwise, I'll be thinking, what if it was this or what if it was that? At least I know now, 100%, it's uh, it's not that. And it's got nothing to do with the contacts. There's no need to blow in there or clean anything or wiggle it about. It's just not working because the chip itself has gone. Now, what are my options? Yes, I could uh, uh, ask Gadget UK if he could do me a favour again and put it on one of those EEPROMs for me. 
But realistically now, he's very busy. I can get this game from CEX in the UK for £15 boxed or unboxed. I can get it for £12. We sell for £12. That comes with a two-year guarantee. Uh, because remember, there's already a box here. It's strange. If I look this one up on eBay at the moment, it seems to be selling between £30 and £40. So it's quite an expensive game. But you can get a boxed one for £15 for CEX. Or you can get a mint one, it says, in its box for £30. So it's one of those things where it's actually cheaper to buy it from a high street shop with a two-year guarantee rather than eBay. So if it's only £12 to get it, if I really wanted to have this game, it would probably be better for me just to go down the road or order online rather than having to get Chris to do a load of work to send that over to me. But obviously, if you had that equipment yourself, then that is an option. So unfortunately, I know it makes for a boring video, but... Just show you that sometimes these chips do go faulty and uh, I still enjoyed it I still enjoyed looking inside it because the first time I did this however long ago It was a year ago or whenever I found it so confusing and now because I've done it once already I kind of knew straight away. It was going to be the chip so for me It was still it was relatively interesting, but I presume to watch it. It probably wasn't the best thing to watch So unfortunately, I'm not going to be getting this one working but if one comes up in the future, uh, at least I know I've got a box and stuff for it, which is in uh, which is in pretty good nick, and it's kind of nice seeing the little sticker there. And also, looks like there's some. Would these be for old-fashioned passwords, symbols, or something? I don't know because they seem to be like some sort of hot air balloon, and that funny little face and a dynamite, and this thing here seems to be the same as this, some kind of pogo stick. I don't know, maybe that's some kind of password to get if you've got to a certain level in the game, you have to put in certain icons to go straight to that level again. I don't know, or unless it's some sort of cheat or something. Haven't got a clue because I've never played this game, never even heard about it before. But uh, yeah, that's it. I really wish I could have got this working, but unfortunately, it's not to be. Yeah, that is it. If you got any enjoyment from it at all, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.